What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be buying some of the fastest growing freshwater fish on earth. Now these fish aren't just special because of how big they get. Some can get over 150 pounds, but they are also special because the growth rate on them is insane. And I'm here today to test how fast we can get these fish in just a short amount of time. But before we leave and head to the fish store to buy these fish, I wanna show you all how we're gonna transport them back to my house because the fish store is over two hours away. So right here, we got our flop box sent to us by Flop Industries. On the side, we got our portable aeration system, which is a necessity when transporting fish a long way. I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up and show you guys what we got going on in the inside here. First things first, we got a cooler. If you're transporting colder water fish or keeping bait fish while you're fishing, it'll keep them nice and chilled. And then right here, we got a retractable bait well, which is awesome. Now we have to dig around and try to catch your fish. I'm gonna shut this up, load this up in the truck, guys. And if you all wanna buy a flop box for yourself, use code MAF10 and the link below and you guys can get your own flop box for your fishing and fish transporting needs. Now let's head to the fish store. All right, guys, we are here at Discover Aquatics and check it out behind me here. They have hundreds of tanks since we've last been here. We got yeah, Nick yeah. here, the Yopit farmer, oh, also yeah. the owner, great dudes. And we are here to pick up some special fish today. They have a ton of saltwater stuff, some crazy fish right here in front of me that we're gonna check out too. We're gonna do a mini store tour as well as check out the fish that we're actually gonna buy and take them home with us. So yeah, here are our two Japanese dragon eels. These guys are absolutely crazy. The big one's bit me three times now. I swear last time I saw one of these, they were like a thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, these guys were selling for 1300. So. 1300? Yeah. Yeah, they range anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000. Why are they so expensive? Uh, just rare, just that rarity of, and shipping. Um, you gotta ship them to like two or three spots to get them from Japan to here. Yeah, I also it's see some more fish. expensive fish in this tank. We don't have too many saltwater viewers, but this guy right here would be too cool not to overlook. Yeah, that's a gym tank. Um, so at that size, they're gonna be about a thousand dollar fish. Um, they used to be much more expensive, but they have actually come down some. Just a thousand dollars, right? Yeah, we've got a baby over there for 650. And here's a baby gym tank, and this guy sells for 650. Uh, so that's a California stingray. He just came in the other day. They'll kind of do laps in their tank at first. It's like super they playful. Down. They yeah. actually have some baby sharks right here. Yeah, they're actually captive bred uh, white spotted bamboo sharks. Yeah. We'll feed them and they'll come right out. I'm sure most of you all probably recognize this fish right here from a movie. You know what movie that would be, Nick? That would be uh, Finding Nemo. That's a Moorish Idol. Um, this guy actually eats anything we give him. Um, they're actually pretty hard to get eating in captivity. Um, but this guy's eating flakes, absolutely anything. Could he go with my arapaima? Definitely not. <laughs> I think the Arapaima and him would do very well together. They are from the same place. Yeah, oh they, yeah they'll school right along. Yeah, they'll school together. school together. Same with the Stingray. We might even get that today. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding, guys. I think after we show the saltwater side, we're going to go over the freshwater side of things because that is what we're going to be getting today. So this is, I think, the coolest thing in the store right now. I know we got the Stingray and Sharks, but let me uh, turn the blues off on these lights so we can actually get a good look at them. Yeah, these are uh, Tridacna durasa. They're the second largest clam species in the world next to the true giant clam. Um, these ones are about half grown. That one's probably 10 to 15 years old um, and it'll max out at about two foot long, so. Oh, is it kind of, can it move? Yeah, they'll actually slam shut when they spook. And then back here behind us, look at how many tanks. I mean, we could be here all night. Unfortunately, they closed in five hours. So we only have five hours to film this video. <laughs> Guys, check this out. What the heck is that? Yeah, I'll try to scare them out for you. This is a uh, sargassum frogfish. What? They're the actually heck? found pretty much worldwide. They actually live down in Florida too. That's the craziest fish I think I've seen. Oh, he's freaking out. Yeah. But uh, they live down in sargassum patches up on the surface actually, uh, where they just kind of blend in perfectly with all that algae. A sargassum fish? Sargassum, yeah. Sargassum. Kind of Got a puffer right there. And then you guys recognize this right here? This is the same puffer as Puff Daddy, our puffer, in our 32 gallon bio cube at the fish warehouse, a porcupine puffer fish. There's also one right here too. This is my favorite saltwater fish of all time. I love this little guy. Look at his cute eyes. So that's a Tesla lot of eels. So those guys actually get absolutely massive, like upwards of six foot. I think Rodrigo at Predatory Fins had one that was yeah. like huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love saltwater. Those are sharks coming out. These sharks are so cool. So are these the same ones that hatch out of the eggs? Yeah. Yeah, these guys are, uh, they lay a little, probably a four inch little egg case. And then they actually hatch out not much smaller than this. This is about newborn size. I want to get one so bad. My last shark egg didn't go so well, man. Yeah, and it's hard to get them eating this well too, so it's perfect. That captive bred, never been in the wild, only ever been used to people feeding them. So, so if you want a too. shark for your aquarium, is this one of the best options that you can get? Yeah, they're one of the smaller species. These guys max out about 30 inches, um, which a lot of the other sharks get much, much larger. 
And these guys also like this, they live at the bottom. They don't really need a ton of swimming room. Um, they're almost like a catfish in how they behave. But they just kind of feed along the bottom. This is a regular bamboo shark right here. And this is the white spot, which are not as commonly seen. Is this a wild caught one or uh, captive yeah, bred? I believe so, I believe he's wild caught. So you can see it, just the feeding response difference between the two. Nick's about to show us something crazy. Yeah, so under here, uh, this is kind of like our kind of miscellaneous invert tank. All right, right, all right. Under this rock Holy with all these mangroves. Holy cow. Guys. We've got this beautiful- <laughs> Dude, are you kidding orange me? Orange serpent star. I love these guys. They actually kind of move like an octopus when they're out. Uh, they like hiding under rocks all day, but when you put them out in the light, they'll kind of quickly scurry back under a rock. That might be my new favorite sea creature. That looks like something from like the deep ocean, like a thousand feet deep. So that's it for the saltwater side of things. We're gonna go ahead and head over to the freshwater. Nick's gonna feed some stuff over here. They have all these tanks just dedicated to freshwater aquariums. Check out the Odo Pike, African Odo Pike. Super cool. And we got some Florida, Florida Gar for the monster fish people. And then the uh, Lepradii Bicher, some big ones too. Now over here, guys, this is actually what we came here to get today. I drove two hours just to pick these guys up. Okay. What's in this tank? So I got those super cool albino paku, and then I do have some baby little tiny baby red tail catfish. So initially I planned on coming here to get some of these red tail catfish. It's a red tail hybrid, but the yeah. red tail catfish will come out. They are so tiny that we can barely see them in this tank. Also we're gonna get these albino paku, which are one of the fastest growing freshwater fish along with the red tail. This is an Amazonian catfish. And for those of you all who have not seen how quick a red tail can grow, you guys are just gonna have to wait because I'm gonna document every single week how fast that we can get this fish to grow. I'm gonna be power feeding it every single day to get it huge. They will grow three to four foot and we can probably get them over two foot in the first year. Here's the baby red tail. This is, we're actually getting two today. Oh, they're so fast. Absolutely tiny little guys. That's the smallest red tail I've ever seen. I'm gonna pop a picture up on the screen right now what a red tail looks like when it gets big. Massive. So now we're here today to buy a bunch of these awesome catfish that are gonna get massive as well as buy these Paku, which get huge as well. And they're also known as a tank buster. They will grow so large that they can literally bust through your tank and break your glass. Behind me here though, they have a bunch of other cool fish that I don't personally mess with, but a lot of people love them like the African cichlids over here. Um, a bunch of other loaches and stuff that I'm gonna show you all real quick before we get this thing boxed up in the flop box. In here, these are another super rare fish. These are the uh, freshwater tiger moray. These are the only truly freshwater, fully freshwater moray eel. Um, I've probably got six or seven of them left in here. Another one down there. There'll be a group of them under this sponge filter here too. One day we will have an Asian arowana. These are just silver arowanas, but still one of my favorite fish. Got the angels in here and then a giant pleco. That's sick. Okay, Nick, so we gotta catch these two red tails and we gotta catch the Paku. Here's one of the little baby red tails there. <laughs> oh, they actually sweat. It looks so now. small right now, but I'm telling you all, this thing will legit kill everything in its path eventually. This is like a science experiment. Oh, there he goes. A little guy there. First red tail going in. And then you did want both Paku? Yeah, let's get both Paku. Awesome. These guys might even outgrow the red tail. Yeah, they're a nice size We're gonna already. see, guys. This is the first time I've ever seen this done on YouTube. We're gonna see how big we can get these fish. I literally want them to be at least a couple feet by the end of the year. Yeah, they are beautiful looking guys. So guys, we got our fish right here. All we gotta do is strap it down and we're gonna head on home and get them into their new aquarium. Woo! That was a long drive. I am exhausted. Let's check on the babies real quick and see how they're doing. This is so much harder doing everything with one hand. Ugh, come on. Here we go. Ah. There they are, guys. Look at how beautiful those Pocky are. So all you have to do is just raise this up and literally the fish come right up to the surface. Got the Pocky there, let's get a good look at these guys. So I believe this fish is from like Taiwan or something. And the bigger they get, don't not only do they get really long, but they also get super girthy. But this is the albino version of the Pocky. Which we'll pop a picture up on the screen of a normal one right here. Pretty incredible. And then right here, guys, I've never seen them this small. Normally, 90% of the time, these guys actually get sent to rescues because they get so big. I'm going to be adding these little guys to my 75 gallon aquarium that's in the Fish King warehouse back there. Believe it or not, these fish will actually outgrow that tank within a couple of months. Most fish can go their whole life in a 75 gallon. Well, these guys can't. They are tank busters and they're gonna get so big, they'll probably one day outgrow the 8,000 gallon pond, which is just insane. So let's head in there right now. I wanna show you all some of the projects that we got going on and also update you all on the 8,000 gallon pond. Here's the 8,000 gallon pond, everybody. 
As you can see, they're still repairing it. We have a tiny leak still right here. Gave a little update in the last video, but we can't figure out what's going on. I guess it's probably leaking water out of the glass. So that's why it is not completely filled up. But that's not the topic of today's video. Obviously these fish can't go in there. They're just too small. So they'll be going in this tank right here. All I have currently in the tank is this baby arowana back there and some feeder fish for him just because he's having a hard time eating. We got these lids on here just to make sure he doesn't jump out. And then in this tank, I got the filters and stuff cut off, but we got Moose, the massive red tail hybrid in there. Let's see if we can get him to come out. He's a big boy. Oh, he loves hiding in that pipe. Then we also have one of the Zingu pike hiding in there as well. But what I wanna go ahead and do is get these fish acclimated and ready for their new tank. That way their water temperature is the same. Believe it or not, so this red tail catfish right here actually is 50% of what this catfish is. So this is a red tail tiger shovel nose hybrid. I'm gonna make him come out. Come out, Moose. Come on, Moose. This is a rescue that we actually got. Moose isn't even a year, year old yet and he's almost two foot long. Come on, Moose, come out. There he is. But this red tail right here is 50% blood of that fish. And these guys grow a lot bigger and a lot quicker. So within six months, these baby red tail catfish will probably be about the same size as moose. That's crazy. So while I was acclimating the fish, I went ahead and added these two pipes in there. This is just gonna provide structure and caves for the fish. I do worry about these tiny red tails getting potentially eaten by this arowana that's just chilling behind the heater for some reason. Um, but honestly, the arowana do stay at the top of the tank and the catfish will stay at the bottom. So I don't think it'll be an issue as long as they're well fed. What the heck is this fish doing? This arowana acts so weird. He's been alone in here ever since the arapaima have been gone. But now it's time, guys. I'm gonna first add the paku, but just look how easy this is. So I'm gonna bring the lid up and it's gonna bring this thing up again. And look, now the fish have no water really to swim and you can just easily grab them out by hand. There's that albino paku, such a cool fish, need a name. There he goes, golly. I mean, I know people that have kept Paku in a tank this size for like 10 years and they literally are like the size of the tank. It's pretty crazy. Here's the next Paku going in here. I guess this is an albino red belly because it's got that red underneath it. Whoa, kind of slippery. Next, I'm gonna grab one of the red tails. I really think that we should name it Tater and Todd. That would be pretty cool. But look how cute this little catfish is. One of my favorite monster fish. And here's the last baby red tail that we got. This is kind of an expensive day. I think we spent like 130 bucks on these four fish. This is probably the worst first fish that you could ever buy in the aquarium store. I highly recommend not to buy this fish. It will get so big. It'll get as long as this tank within a couple years. I promise you guys that. So don't go to your pet store and buy this fish if you don't have future plans to get a bigger tank for them or a massive pond. All right, so we got all the fish in the tank now. It looks amazing. I am so happy with them. I'm so glad I picked up these albino paku, even though I didn't plan on it. Um, as time goes on, they will start to settle in and they'll start eating like crazy. I'm gonna put a bunch of feeder fish in here that I've quarantined at my house. That way they can eat 24 seven. But I'm gonna come in here every morning and night and literally power feed these guys as much as possible to grow them huge. So make sure to follow along. I'm gonna do kind of a series. So if you wanna see that, make sure to stay up to date. Every week for the next six months, I'm gonna give you guys an update on all the fish. So make sure to stay tuned for that. It's gonna be so cool to see how big these guys actually get. Also, for those of you all who watched the video to this point, I have a very special giveaway for you guys. So what I want to do is I wanna do a special challenge. A challenge to see how big these fish will grow over the next six months. So what you gotta do is you gotta go down below in the comments and comment down below how big you think the two baby red tails will get and the two baby albino paku will get over the next six months. And in six months, I'm gonna make a video announcing the winner who guessed exactly the number of how big these fish actually got. And that guy or girl will get an insane prize worth a ton, a ton of money. So make sure to do that guys. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and I will see you all in the next one. Peace. Oops, almost forgot. We gotta put these lids on that way the arowana can't jump out.